everyone. Um, my name is Deborah Cohen. I am the executive director of the Roberta Buffett Institute for Global Affairs. It is such a pleasure to see you all. I know we also have a large audience online. We're delighted to welcome our guests today to this event, which is co-sponsored by the Buffett Institute and the Pulitzer Center for Crisis Reporting. And my thanks to Tom Huntley of the Pulitzer Center for bringing this event to us. We're really, really grateful to you, and we look forward to doing more soon, um, as well as to our Buffett uh, staff members who have worked so hard to make this event come to fruition. Dana Dion, Chief of Staff, Head of Communications, who has just walked in, and Mae Malone, um, Associate Director of Communications, who has been, as usual, invaluable. Um, the title of today's event, Inside Putin's Russia, has a whiff of the mid 20th century about it. And that is because from, as from the 1930s through the Cold War period, today Russian opinion, public opinion to us is a mystery. What degree of support can Putin's regime actually count on? What difference have the sanctions made to the support of ordinary people for the Russian regime. Now, knowing what's happening in Russia is especially difficult because of the clampdown on Russian reporters as well as foreign reporters. According to the organization Reporters Without Borders, Russia is one of the most dangerous places in the world now to try to report from, with nearly three dozen reporters imprisoned, many more exiled, and others targeted for assassination. That makes the reporting that our two guests today have done from contemporary Russia all the more extraordinary. Marzio, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce all three panelists um, and then we will have a short film and then we'll, the event will get started. It's okay, right, if I go ahead and introduce you all, anyway. Marzio Mian served for seven years as deputy editor-in-chief of the Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera's weekly magazine. He's a regular contributor to many other European media organizations producing print, audio, and video reports from 56 countries to date. Among the stories he's covered are the end of the Cold War, as well as the Balkan conflict. And I love that he's added this in his bio for American presidential campaigns, truly a hard foreign correspondent duty. Alessandra Cosmelli is a documentary photographer whose work has taken him to more than 50 countries. He is particularly interested in the ways in which individuals live in a globalized world. He's published five monographic books and his images have featured in publications in the United States, such as the New York Times and Harper's Magazine. Our moderator today is our colleague from the Weinberg Center for International and Area Studies, Ambassador Ian Kelly. Um, Ian is a retired senior foreign service officer who served as the United States ambassador to Georgia from 2015 to 2018. He's a Russia specialist who among other uh, duties and many other posts was director of the Office of Russian Affairs. Before joining the State Department, he earned his PhD in Slavic Languages and Literatures from Columbia University. So as I said, we're going to begin with a short film that Alessandro has compiled from footage of their trip down the Volga. Thank you again for joining us. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, it's very much a pleasure for us to share with you our work. And now I will show a short documentary video, which is part of a larger um, documentary. But we thought um, that this part was particularly interesting for the conversation that we are going to have with uh, Ambassador Kelly and Marcio. Uh, afterwards, we, we will show you also the photographic body of work um, that we produce uh, beside the documentary and uh, enjoy <laughs> and we'll talk later.
during the Soviet times, Russians had very strict ideas of what is good and what is bad. In 90s, when the Soviet Union broke down, we met new ideas of what is good and what is bad. Uh, LGBT ideas uh, are one of uh, those uh, which came uh, to Russia from uh, abroad saying that uh, everyone decides how to live his own uh, life. Do what you want. This idea for uh, Russia is uh, maybe too tough. Russia in a short time has become a very distant, mysterious and hostile world. In St. Petersburg, Russia's most European city, today we hear words that give a sense of how, with the conflict in Ukraine, a total opposition to the West is taking root. So what we feel here is the uh, clash of uh, civilizations. Being here on the border of cultures, means to feel the clash of civilizations, which for last 10 years is uh, happening more harder, stronger, and more loud. Even the Hermitage, with its collection of European and universal art, becomes an ideological tool in the neo-imperial design of Putin's Russia. No, it's combining because we have here history of the world in Hermitage, cultural history of the whole world, in, let's say I'm saying it's encyclopedia of the world culture, but it is written in Russian language, because it's our interpretation of the world history. So it's uh, very arrogant, but that's how we are. For almost a month we travel, not without risk, along the Volga River, from north to south, all the way to the Caspian Sea, because it is the river that has determined the history and identity of the Russians. They still call it Matushka, Little Mother. Its sources have been consecrated by Patriarch Kirill. It is the master route to try to understand what it means to be Russian today in this second summer of war. The country looks back, feeds the mythology of greatness by clinging to the past, even at its most tragic. Nostalgia and desire for revenge toxic mixture. Here we are in the young Lenin's room in Ulyanovsk. Nostalgia is not only the people who have come to the time of the Soviet Union, but also the young people who have not seen the Soviet Union and have presented the image of the Soviet Union by the stories of their parents, of their parents. Of course, Stalin was connected directly with the Soviet Union, the Empire. And, perhaps, this idea of the Soviet Union, which existed even before the Revolution, в Российской империи, которая потом продолжала существовать уже в Советской империи, оно, наверное, свойственно большинству людей нашей страны и как бы в какой-то степени оно является своеобразным идейным допингом, что ли, для людей. Вот, потому что главное держать страну, главное поднять ее могущество, величие, имперскость. Вот это и есть такое в наших людях. If Lenin is the most popular statue in Russia, his finger no longer points to the future. Stalin is the real icon of summer 2023, the Che Guevara of Generation Z. The t-shirts of the teenager read, if I were here, there wouldn't be all this shit. Volgograd, formerly Stalingrad, is a totem city. It is a symbol back in vogue, celebrating the resilience and sacrifice of the Russians who seem resigned to a future of isolation and conflict. Sold out, the eight volumes Andrei Voronov has published on the eight month of a great battle, 700,000 Soviets and German dead. He argues that now he doesn't see the same compactness as in the great patriotic war, but he assures us that the time will soon come for a new Stalingrad. No, history, and I as a historian, Безусловно, Россия показывала из раза в раз пример, что как птица Феникс возрождается 
из пламени. И герои, они ждут своего часа, они уже есть. Время играет на Россию, и придет это время, оно не за горами. The messianic idea of Russia sacrificing itself for the future of humanity is widespread. Our country and our nation got a special mission to save the world. It's, it's not just a slogan. Uh, I say it with a full meaning. Special, uh, sp special mission to save the world from the devil. The kids from the Donbas, and it's hard to verify if they were deported. We meet them one day at the newly opened Soviet Soldiers Memorial in Redzev, on the Upper Volga. They're obliged to make a pilgrimage of patriotic indoctrination. A famous fairy tale writer accompanies them. Они изучают свою родину. Мы считаем, что познание родины это самое главное воспитание. Поэтому вот такое значение. Места памяти мы их отвозим, мы показываем. Лучше один раз увидеть, чем вся семья земля напоена кровью. Россия не просто, но она выживет по молитвам наших старцев и по молитвам наших святых. Она выживет, выживет этими ребятами, которые не дадут ей пропасть. Well, it's a real pleasure for me to uh, to, to moderate this this uh, this panel. Um, you know, as uh, as my wife Francesca knows, who's sitting over here, I read a lot about Russia. It's it's really been kind of a lifelong obsession with me. But I have to say that your article uh, in Harper's was probably the most valuable article in terms of my trying to understand what is happening in, in Russia. Uh, and you, 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 you note that um, Putin has declared war on foreign journalists, so you don't have foreign journalists traveling around Russia, but you did. <laughs> um, and I'd, I'd like to, to start off talking about a little bit about the theme of, of, this, um, of this short film that we saw, the whole idea of, uh, of Russian identity and uh, I really liked how you talked about the cycles of Russian history, going from extremes, uh, from pro-West to leaning towards the East. And that was a very good, I think, metaphor for it, going from Turgenev, the, the more Western author, to Dostoevsky, who was very proud about being a Eurasian author. Um, I, how much of this hostile rhetoric and this turn to the East is a function of the last two years? The try for uh, Putin trying to rally the country around this very brutal war in Ukraine. And how much do you think is more of a long lasting kind of strategic decision to abandon the West uh, and try and uh, have the country uh, really identify with this special role of of, uh, of Russia, this anti-Western role. Yes, thank you, Ambassador Kelly. And um, first of all, I want to thank the. <clears throat> this is uh, our last uh, event in these days at uh, Northwestern, and uh, we had an amazing experience. It was. Uh, it was really a honor to have a chance to present our work and uh, and we were quite impressed i want to say uh, about of the the students the the, the questions that were posing to us and uh, really really uh, was remarkable and um, and then <clears throat> uh, i want to thank tom hanley who's a friend and uh, he's uh, we actually uh, this trip was uh, was uh, uh, happened because uh, because Tom uh, uh, was supporting the the, the idea, uh, believed in the idea, and uh, and so thank you again to the Pulitzer Center. Uh, coming to the question, um, 
actually, um, yeah, you know, this goes in uh, circles and uh, uh, Russia was always uh, um, uh, attracted from the West uh, and, um, and also uh, obsessed to the idea of being, um, of being, um, um, uh, um, um, I don't know what to say, is um, infe infected almost. No, then Dostoevsky was using this term. No? Um, and, um, but uh, now uh, I think, uh, yeah, in, in 2007, until 2007, Putin was still uh, defining Russia as a, a European state, a European nation. And um, and um, I think there are, there are responsibilities in the West uh, from the Clinton administration, I think, in the 90s, especially, uh, that uh, uh, there was a kind of uh, uh, humiliation of Russia after the defeat in the, in the Cold War and uh, also the expansion uh, enlargement of nato was uh, <clears throat> was uh, something that um, was an act that uh, provoked in some way a reaction that of course is a russian reaction a very uh, 19th century <laughs> style and um, and brutal as we we, we saw, and uh, but uh, uh, now um, uh, I think uh, the the this, the guy there was mentioning a clash of, of civilization is it started uh, long before uh, 2022, uh, 2022. Um, and um, Russia was um, I think. Um, uh, Forced, oh no, and uh, it was um, uh, um, uh, obliged to 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 look at uh, the east uh, uh, because of uh, of course the the, um, the sanctions and uh, the only solution was uh, was China, uh, but uh, I wasn't I wasn't. Um, in Russia in February uh, 22, in the beginning of the war, and I remember um, nobody was uh, um, supporting the, the war against Ukraine. Everybody had uh, uh, friends, relatives, uh, and uh, was uh, absolutely, it wasn't absolutely a, 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 a patriotic war. But uh, uh, now, um, uh, from our experience, we 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 had the the feeling that uh, the the patriotic war is against the West. Now there is a there is a big divide, uh, culture, um, fueled fueled by the the uh, Orthodox Church mostly, the ideologues the ideologues of this uh, new ideology. Uh, are are the priests the, the pope and uh, and then uh, some uh, some uh, philosophers uh, not so uh, uh, i mean um, uh, not the first first class philosophers but uh, they are just propagandists but the the ideology comes from uh, from and and the orthodox church and uh, and also the the monks the the monasteries uh, have have a big uh, they have a big influence influence in society even though churches are empty <laughs> but uh, they have a they have a, a social role and uh, yeah yeah I, I found it particularly interesting that you went down the Volga and ended up at the at the Caspian, and you were able to highlight some of these these new uh, trade ties that they've had to set up with, particularly with Iran, and uh, and of course you know you mentioned uh, China too. And I, it it it's it's hard for me to understand how Russians who really are European culturally, they're not politically European, I think, 
um, I, it's, it's hard for me to, to believe that Putin can sustain this, this, uh, this kind of uh, complete rejection of the West. But having read your article, I understand more about why. And you mentioned the, the Orthodox Church. I didn't really appreciate. They are really kind of the, uh, uh, I don't know, they're kind of the ground, uh, ground soldiers of the, of the uh, campaign, you know, to reject the, the liberal West and go back to, to, uh, to Russian values. Yeah, just a few days ago, um, the patriarch Kilir def defined the, the world as a, the war is a, um, a, a, a holy war, a holy war. So, but um, the the Volga, uh, yeah, just briefly say why we decided to to follow that uh, uh, route is because. Uh, uh, Russia is the, the country of big rivers, uh, but uh, yeah, the Volga is the river, is where everything started and where the Tsarist Empire was rooted, faith, culture, uh, just name a, a, a writer, Russian writer who didn't uh, uh, talk about the Volga. Gorky is from the Gor uh, there. Tolstoy studied in, in, uh, in Kazan. Lenin was born in uh, Ulyanovsk, today Ulyanovsk, and then Stalingrad, and then, yeah, history is based, is, uh, identity is based there, and also economy. And uh, just like in uh, World War II, when uh, the Volga was the corridor, and uh, that's why Stalingrad happened there, because it was a strategic corridor, it still is, now a, a corridor between uh, between um, uh, Russia and uh, the Caspian Sea, yeah. Iran, and uh, and uh, China. Uh, uh, through the Volga, Russia is uh, avoiding the, the sanctions, exporting in, um, exporting oil, grain, and uh, etc., and importing drones, our uh, army, and uh, and uh, other and uh, and. Um, uh, Technology and, and, and so on. So, uh, but the, the the economy, the Russian economy, is doing well. The sanction is, I mean, uh, the the fact of going underground and uh, being a witness. We can we could witness how the 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 normal uh, the life is normal in Russia, and the, the sanctions are, had no. Big effects, and actually, the, Russia is doing well economically. The the GDP is uh, growing uh, uh, more than Europe uh, is growing three points uh, uh, last year. Europe, the Euro European Union growth was one one percent, and um, and the um, uh, unemployment is two point five. And I can mention many. Uh, and export, export is uh, oil and gas. Is just uh, the oil and gas that used to go in Europe goes to India and uh, and uh, China. And uh, but what is uh, the big news? I think and uh, the Volga again was the place, the perfect place to to witness this is uh, is agriculture. Uh, Russia is becoming a, 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 a um, agricultural superpower. They are the first pr pr for production and export of grain in the world, and they use the grain as a polit political tool. They sell grain uh, to strategically for uh, with uh, low price to Mexico, for example. <laughs> Uh, to to South America, North Africa, South uh, South uh, Asia. So um, and the, and then the, yeah, Russia was a, a, a country of net uh, 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 import, and now is becoming a uh, net e export. Even with uh, agricultural products uh, like uh, cheese or or. Uh, um, yeah, dairy, dairy products, and they are now exporting uh, pigs uh, to China, uh, and um, and uh, 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 America was a big exporter of pigs in 
uh, to China, but now Russia is is uh, taking that uh, that uh, part. So, um, the the um, I think this is well, I was very very surprised uh, looking how how you know this big uh, uh, farms are working with uh, copying uh, they copying uh, Western uh, machinery and. Uh, but uh, uh, they, I mentioned in the in the story I wrote for, Ar for Arpers that yeah we visit uh, Sofcots, uh, <clears throat> um, fact a big factory that um, still uh, defines itself as a communist factory actually is a private holding but uh, uh, this the, on the top of the factory there is a, the, the 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 Soviet flag <laughs> and. Um, but uh, but the, the production is uh, is just uh, huge. Uh, Alessandro, what's uh, no, no, uh, uh, because we, we were both very surprised. Of, uh, there is this uh, local pride, no, of the food now that we have uh, Russian uh, healthy uh, local uh, food, and. Uh, because they don't use fertilizers, because they used to import fertilizers, but uh, uh, but uh, the the there is a patriotic uh, uh, propaganda on um, on Russian uh, food now. Yeah, I think one of the I think one of the most striking uh, parts of your article were, were the, the the pictures from. Uh, from this Savhoz and uh, just your characterization of the of the director uh, and I've just it it's it's something that I have really not seen that kind of complete nostalgia for the Soviet Union and even more surprising is as you say the second coming of of Stalin and of course I, I think that is part of the war in Ukraine because of the way that Putin uh, you know characterizes uh, Ukraine as being Nazis, and as you say, Putin says German tanks are coming back again. You know, leopard leopard tanks are uh, are, are coming back again. Um, but I, you know, I, I maybe because uh, Francesca and I spent a lot of time in Saint Petersburg, both as, as a student and then as a diplomat, and, um, it, it is hard for me to understand how politically. Russians could accept this complete rejection of the West. I mean, even Stalin had diplomatic relations with the West. Uh, you know, they were allies of ours in World War II. This is a complete rejection. It's almost a North Koreanization of uh, politically, anyway. Um, and so I just, you know, wonder wonder how sustainable it is. I didn't think it was, but when I read your article, I thought, well, maybe maybe it's more sustainable than I than I thought. Um, can I ask you one more question? We're gonna we're gonna open it up uh, open it up to, to questions. Um, you 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 talk about the you know the Putin's war on foreign journalists, um, and I just find it extraordinary just how much access you had. I, I wonder if you could talk about. Um, I mean, did you ever feel like you were followed, or Alessandro? Did did you feel like you couldn't take pictures of certain objects or people or? Uh, did you really feel like you really had access to whatever you wanted, or did you feel pressure or intimidation at any time? Um, first of all, um, <clears throat> I think it's important to say that uh, before going, before starting the trip, so before going into Russia, um, surprisingly, <clears throat> we didn't know what to expect in terms of uh, even um, even how to pack your bag, you know, how to bring, what to bring with you. And for me especially, the issue was uh, what gear should I use? Uh, because the, the, the important thing was to be as more discreet as possible, more invisible as possible, because uh, we knew uh, we were in very much welcome and also we were traveling on a business visa not a journalist visa and that's very that that's a big <laughs> issue <laughs> and we were nervous too <clears throat> so 
um, because simply they they don't give uh, journalists visa, especially for the kind of trip we, we've done. So um, that was a big issue. Once we got in, um, we found uh, an uh, apparently yeah, we had a super fix Russians. Yeah, apparently a brave a, and uh, smart and uh, very efficient. And he reassured us, uh, you know, and especially me with my gear. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. Um, um, and that was what happened. Basically, we got in, and we found uh, apparently a normal situation. But it was very much in the surface, of course, because uh, we knew uh, we might have been followed, we might have been controlled, uh, and we had signs of. Um, of, of this, uh, especially uh, at a certain point of the, of the trip in Kazan, we were kicked out basically by our our contact there, and who invited us um, for a, for a lunch, and he said, "You're never gonna talk to anybody here," and that's what happened. A, <laughs> he said that he was a former FSB agent, so. <clears throat> So um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't uh, for sure. It wasn't um, comfortable, but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, we had to to bring back home, you know, uh, our work, and uh, probably the reason why because we were traveling and and traveling every day in a different place we could have been you know uh, less uh, noticeable uh, in a way but just to tell just to tell you in uh, for a month and for 6000 uh, kilometers 4000 miles uh, we didn't uh, meet one single foreigner the only language we heard was russian or dialects dialect so so this is quite uh, scaring when you it's easy to be paranoid of this and uh, but it, it's also confusing because uh, if you don't have your translator your interpreter all the time with you you don't understand and you don't you can't read you can talk and that's kind of uh, um, uncomfortable and then at the end, uh, yeah, at the end we had a problem because uh, we were stopped at the, at the airport in Astrakhan, a small airport, so we were really visible and uh, our passports were taken and we were questioned for a few hours. And uh, But uh, we were lucky enough that they didn't search for the material, uh, for listen, the picture, but they, they searched the telephone uh, because Alessandro has, uh, is a resident in, uh, in Miami, so this was, was not really uh, the, the, the perfect thing, but... Uh, yeah, it wasn't the perfect business card, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, but you used your Italian passport, right, Alessandro? I did, I did. You got an American passport. Too. Yeah, I, I have both, uh, yeah. so that was my concern, yeah. and uh, they... I started, they started asking questions and little by little they came to that. So I had to admit, I'm, I'm a, I have a double citizenship. And, uh, but, you know, uh, I didn't have it with me. <laughs> and that was a good move to leave home without that, yeah. And then we were in contact every day. I was sending uh, messages every day to the a person in the Italian embassy in, Mas in Moscow saying where we were who we met and uh, where we were headed so so they, they at least they they knew where we were so that was well good thank you thank you very much uh we're going to open it up now for questions um yes go ahead sir Um, 
I mean, uh, the, the, what we heard there is that what, what happens in, in uh, Russia is just what happens in many other countries where uh, people leave the, the countryside, there is more and more uh, urbanization, and uh, the, um, Putin is failing the, 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 in, in poly, the, the his strategy on, uh, on uh, demographic, I think, uh, and... Uh, yeah, encouraging a growth in the birth rate. Yeah, he's not, not doing too well there. But uh, we found cities like Nizhny Novgorod. We, 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 we arrived in Nizhny Novgorod one, what was it, a Friday night or something like that? It was a weekend day. And it was packed with the young t youngster uh, partying in the streets. And uh, that was impressive, uh, uh, not just because uh, they were young and partying, but just because uh, it was like um, um, very extreme, you know, in a way, uh, something that you wouldn't expect in a, in a, in, in a place that it's a, it's, it's a war and it's, it's a drafting, you know, uh, young, young. Yeah, but uh, but the recruitment is uh, happening outside uh, the cities and the villages, poor and, and poor uh, outskirts of the of the of the cities, and uh, and uh, is is becoming a kind of welfare now. Uh, uh, going voluntary is a, because they 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 get um, really high salaries and uh, it's like uh, you know a normal wage is between five hundred to six hundred dollars and uh, they get uh, two two thousand and five hundred dollars per month and plus uh, five thousand for. Um, the first wage is for, so you can you can buy a house uh, in uh, for five thousand dollars in the I don't know some I mean in the Provence so you know and um, so uh, for example the, the the family we we visit the, the widow and the daughter of a volunteer who was who died, was who died after forty days. Uh, in, in Donbass, uh, he was um, he, he went just to pay the mortgage, and um, and uh, so uh, and uh, he was a gypsy, and it was very interesting, very interesting. Yeah. And that was another striking part of your yes, Dara, go ahead. So I'm I'm super interested because, you know, I've been to several of the places along your route by train, not by boat. But um, uh, so, you know, there's a kind of nostalgia. So I'm, um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about logistics and about difficulties you encountered, especially could you talk a little bit more about Kazan? Because I had been curious to know you talked about uh, monasteries and monks and there's that uh, monastery right in the middle of the Volga River outside Kazan, Sviazhsk. Um, and uh, so I was just curious to know sort of how you decided who to talk to, where you ran into obstacles. Um, <clears throat> actually, we, 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 we went down, down the, road, the Volga with, with a van, not, not by boat. Uh, we some some parts yes we, we actually in Yaroslav and uh, in uh, Astrakhan, <clears throat> but um, we uh, uh, we met uh, several priests and uh, <clears throat> pope, and um, and there is another episode in the uh, in the documentary, and um, a different kind of priests and um, I. I, from my previous work in uh, in Russia, I know uh, the, the the Vladika. I mean the the, the, the priests very well, and uh, I know if they if they um, are open to talk and they want to talk, they have the authority to do it. And so, uh, usually they are linked to the FSB, and. Um, and uh, and we we had different uh, we the 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 last uh, the last uh, uh, priest uh, we met uh, uh, in uh, Balakovo uh, he was um, from the old believers 
the old believers is, um, <clears throat> I mean, uh, is a, is a schism no? from from the Orthodox, official of the church, but they are uh, growing a lot now. As they are the the the, the front line, let's say, of the propaganda, and uh, and he was uh, quite scary. He was a quite a scary guy because uh, uh, at a point he he told us how they are. <clears throat> Russia is ready to use the atomic bomb because there is no uh, reason to live in a world without uh, Russia, without a real Russia, without the Russia, Russia uh, wants. Uh, I mean, what the, 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 <clears throat> they want to gain. So, and uh, but that yeah, that was caring. But uh, also, we met another priest. Uh, very interesting in, in uh, Rybinsk, who was uh, also a surgeon. So he was uh, uh, com going every, every, almost every week to Donbas to bless uh, the front line and uh, and to to and to operate as a as a surgeon. So uh, yeah, but there was um, uh, the the religion in our. Uh, Trip was a uh, was a crucial uh, crucial theme theme yeah. Uh, so we have some uh, questions from our, our Zoom audience. Uh, there's one here for Alessandro. Um, Alessandro, do you have a theme or an idea before you started on your trip on what kind of uh, images you wanted to capture, and then do you have any plan to publish the, the images? Yeah. Any plans to publish? the images that that we've we've seen and that are in the article um, <clears throat> i have to say that um um a work like this a reportage like this which is made on the road it's very different than any other kind of um story you want you you carry out photographically um because um, of course you you prepare yourself, you study, you you try to get as 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 many information as you can about everything. You you will visit everything um, you know in terms of um, any kind of topic. Uh, the more you have, the the more you get into the story. But the thing is that um, traveling every day. Um, and, and of course, we had um, we had uh, contacts, so we had appointments down the down the road. Uh, but but in between, uh, every minute, it's a different. Uh, it's a, the story unfolds like that every hour, every minute. So you you need to be really um, very open and ready to to catch all you can do, all you can catch. So, and uh, of course uh, you have to put yourself in, in the story. You have to put your vision, you have to put your um, interpretation of the facts that, you, that, that happens around you. So, and hopefully, yes, yeah. we'll publish the, <laughs> the pictures. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go back to the, the audience now. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. So thank you so much for being here. I mean, this is fascinating. Um, I'm curious about, uh, you mentioned that you had to move from time to time, and we know about the poisoning, poisonings, we know about, uh, you know, Brittany Griner and all these, not just journalists, but others as well, who've uh, had a difficult time once they get to Russia and leave. What was your greatest threat each day uh, as you made this journey? And what were some moments of joy along the journey? Uh, I'm with Alessandro. I mean, we are friends, and we worked uh, together so many times. And uh, actually, we made a long story on the Mississippi many, some years ago. Uh, very different, of course. And uh, but uh, um, so for one month, more or less, we never separated one minute we were always together and uh, we were looking around all the time 
looking uh, if somebody was following us, uh, uh, even in the step. And so very stressing, very stressing. And um, and we, uh, I mean, we, there was there were all also situation where we there was a, I mean, we were um, a bit making a gamble, <laughs> like uh, the one when we wanted to film and uh, and uh, taking pictures of uh, the biggest dam in uh, in the Volga because it was part of the story, but that was one of those uh, uh, moments where if something happened there we were in jail right right away and we weren't being here now <laughs> uh, because uh, and um, and then um, uh, yeah there were um, things we didn't do uh, that we wanted to do uh, even um, um, uh, let's say some um, uh, f sources we wanted to to have and we couldn't have so uh, is that <clears throat> but it was uh, you know was uh, important to be there and everything was 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 a scoop <laughs> in some way you know uh, the joy the joy was uh, was because uh, we met <clears throat> great people and uh, even we had uh, uh, was just uh, 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 amazing opportunity to be the only ones there. It was just like uh, 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 traveling in a, in a different planet at a point, a, an exotic place where like feel like to be the, the first Westerner to, to visit Russia. <laughs> That was the sensation, yeah. But at one point, there was a um, there was a, a specific moment where we, we we were worried when in Ribinsk we we and we were worried uh, first very happy and then worried because uh, we got to talk to the to the Pope in Ribinsk and we 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 knew he was connected with the with the power and you know probably FSB as well. So we were very happy to have his, you know, interview, but at the same time, what's gonna happen next, you know? Yeah, because this, all these people, uh, beside the priests, but uh, even friendly people open to talk, uh, we, we didn't know these people, it was not our best friend or our cousin. I mean, they could have denounces, uh, denounced easily. And telling somebody there are a few guys here to, um, making questions and taking pictures. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so we're going to go one one more to from the uh, Zoom audience. This is, of course, on the Volga. You saw a number of different ethnicities and, and religions, and so there's a question about you know, did you observe? What, what did you observe about the inter-ethnic, especially Muslim, non-Muslim, Muslim or Turkic, Russian relations that you? Yeah, this is interesting, really interesting because um, uh, talking again about Kazan, Kazan is a big city and uh, is uh, the capital of the Tatarstan, uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, Republic. And um, and actually, now uh, Tatarstan is the the biggest supp supporter or the best ally of uh, of uh, Putin. Uh, the governor is really the, the is his uh, right hand um, in the country. And um, uh, what we were told is that uh, he, uh, Putin was really good in uh, buying their support and um, um, you know the, the dean of the university very important university is a muslim uh, the mayor is a muslim and the main institutions are but is it's a institutional um, islam no um, uh, uh, very different uh, is what happens in the caucasus where uh, Islam there has a um, national um, uh, pride and uh, uh, and uh, is where 
terrorists come from, where the problems come from uh, for Putin. And uh, the south of the country is uh, fragile, and uh, Putin knows that, and, uh, and he's... Um, is not so focused on that because he has uh, his uh, Ukraine and other, but uh, that's a threat, a big threat for 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 the regime. You're from this side of the room, so sir. Thank you. Uh, I have a question about your preparation for the trip and how did you connect with this FSB uh, agent uh, and you know. What was your plans to see and uh, people to meet? How how did it all come about? I was not a FSB agent. It was a was a fixer, a fixer. I I, I worked in Russia several times, so I worked with producers and fixer. Fixer is a it's a, a crucial figure and is a, is somebody from. That knows the the the, uh, the, the, the country and and uh, and can help uh, in uh, logistics, but also in finding sources and so on. So he was uh, very helpful. And but we we had um, a plan, of course, uh, that was uh, to focus on some uh, in some uh, topics, main topics, uh, uh, because the 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 aim of this uh, project was ambitious, but was to was to try to to understand uh, what it means to be Russian today, and uh, and so to try to explain this. Um, uh, knowing uh, uh, Russia and uh, and uh, and uh, and having an idea of a story or reportage that was not only on facts, but was a journey uh, investigation on, into ideas, into into the Russian soul to be, <laughs> uh, and um, and so yeah, of course, religion, identity. Uh, and the, the way of life, uh, the, how people was reacting to the sections, sanctions, the patriotism. Uh, actually, I knew that there was this strong uh, nostalgia of the USSR, but not at this, at this level, of course. And that was also uh, a topic that we had in mind since before leaving, uh, before entering Russia. Okay, I think we have time for one one last question, uh, sir. Nostalgia is there really a difference in Australia? Some nostalgia, nostalgia between the major cities and. Sorry, uh, what I'm asking is, um, you seem to give the impression that that a lot of the population is nostalgic, and yet. Uh, reading would give me the impression that major cities have a very different kind of opinion about things than rural places. What's your opinion on that? Uh, nostalgia means many things. Uh, and uh, having a nostalgia from, of the Soviet Union means many things. Uh, for common people uh, or old people means uh, a time of stability and time of uh, of uh, of uh, grandeur no of a, a time of uh, greatness uh, the time of an empire the the the, the was a time of uh, when when the when russia was was a, was a, still an empire and um, for um, uh, for young people, young people uh, that you saw even in pictures, big, uh, young people, uh, teenagers with uh, t-shirt, uh, wearing t-shirts with uh, Stalin face, and that's uh, yeah, uh, icon, no, is a new icon, and um, that means is the the the, the symbol of um, uh, the symbol of. Um, uh, power uh, the, the, uh, when Russia was a, was a, was a, uh, a superpower in the world, and, uh, and uh, 
this is a symbol of victory because Stalin was the one who had, uh, who won uh, World War II and uh, um, at, the, <clears throat> at the cost of uh, 26 million uh, Russians, as we know. Uh, but uh, that's uh, secondary. The, the, for the main thing for Russians is that he's the, the one who, uh, who uh, defeated uh, uh, the Germans, uh, the one who modernized the country, uh, the one who industrialized the country, even there, the co cost, enormous cost. And, um, and so, uh, and that's why even Putin wants to be compared, uh, likes to be compared to Stalin, just like as Stalin liked it to be compared to Ivan the Terrible. But, but yeah, the, there's a, like, you're right, there's a difference between a lot, um, the bigger city and, and the smaller villages. Um, for example, St. Petersburg, it's, it doesn't seem to be very anti-Western at the appearance. You see the same Lamborghinis, the same uh, Bentley that you see, say, in Miami. Uh, once you get to the smaller villages there, it, you, you see very much a difference uh, in the appearance, at least, uh, and, you, and, you, and you start seeing young people in uniform, in camouflage uniform, and uh, you see uh, more poverty, you see different, you know, uh, aspect of the society. Um. Yeah, I, I think you're right. If you look at past elections in particular, I didn't look at this election. I don't know how uh, indicative it was, but the, always the support for Putin is the softest in, in Moscow and in, in St. Petersburg. And so that, I think that's, that's where he's, I think, most afraid of the people. He's not so afraid of support out on the countryside. Outside uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg and a few other uh, big cities, uh, people uh, watch only the one uh, state channel and uh, they, t they don't uh, use the social uh, media. And uh, so uh, that's the, 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 the people who will vote 99% uh, for, for Putin. Well, um, the bad news we, is we have to stop now. Oh, I, go I, ahead. Just sorry, sorry, I would just would like to finish uh, by saying that um, uh, this is the, 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 the work of a, of a team. We are two uh, very well um, um, united friends and, and working together, but the, there's, a, there's, a, there's more. There's a, other people that work with us and help us doing all these things. Great, thank you. Thank you to both of you very much. Yes, let's give a round of applause. Uh, um, thank you to the Buffett Institute. There is uh, a reception out, outside here, and I hope that, uh, that you will stay and continue the, the conversation. Thank you.